Hi, my name is Irina. I've been a super host with Airbnb over 20 times in a row. I've been running two Airbnb properties for the last five years, both in Jamaica. One of them even made to the list of top 10 Airbnbs in the Caribbean. I have already made a video explaining how that happened and people asked me for step-by-step uh, -step instructions. So with this Jamaica vlog, I'd like to share step number one, which would be the most important five tips to start an Airbnb. My YouTube channel is about Jamaica, but this episode can be relevant pretty much to anyone involved in Airbnb business, property owners, managers, or hosts. So let's get into it and see why some properties do really well on Airbnb, while others can make you lose your time and money. Because this video includes a lot of talking head, I thought I would film some parts of it on a beach so you would have something else to look at. Before we go into all the details, it is important to understand what Airbnb really is. Airbnb is a platform where anyone can publish a listing with their property and hope that guests find it interesting and book it. Airbnb is not the only company that provides a platform for short-term rentals. There are others, for example, Booking.com, HomeAway, VRBO, Flipkey, and so on. But Airbnb is very different from all of them. Airbnb makes money by charging so-called Airbnb service fees, basically keeping around 15% from each reservation that goes through their platform. These fees are split between a host and a guest, and unlike other platforms, Airbnb has no reoccurring monthly fees. As soon as you launch your property on Airbnb, you become an Airbnb host and have access to a large group of guests, and you pay nothing until you actually get a reservation. Now, guests, have an access to a large choice of properties and again they pay nothing unless they make a reservation. In practice however things are kind of way more complicated. You see depending on a country where your Airbnb property is located different laws restrictions and regulations apply so this would be the first thing to take into account. In case you're not aware, there is a huge fight going on between the hotel owners and government on one side versus Airbnb company on the other side. They're not happy about Airbnb shared economy concept and there are all sorts of reasons for that. Some are good reasons, some are not good reasons. But here, let's acknowledge the facts. Because of that fight, Many countries now have restrictions for short-term rentals when it comes to Airbnb. In London, for example, you can only have a total of 90 nights of bookings each calendar year. Once you reach this number of bookings, you will not be able to accept any more reservations for that year through Airbnb. In San Francisco, the home of Airbnb founders, you have to register as a business you have to live on the property. Again, the limit, um, the number of days. You cannot rent out more than one property at a time and so on. These are just a few examples to show that depending on a country and even a city, different laws and regulations can apply. To find out what applies to you, simply type the name of your country or your city in Google and add Airbnb rules. Then look for airbnb.com official website. For example, here is a link to registration process in San Francisco. Here is the one for London. Look for the one in Jamaica. See, this is not an official Airbnb site, so skip it and continue to the official one. This page shows that Airbnb do not have any specific requirements to launch properties in Jamaica. Jamaica so far is one of those rare countries where the government has been very supportive of Airbnb. It is clear that the Ministry of Tourism in Jamaica saw the true potential of Airbnb for Jamaican tourism industry. And that is why people in Jamaica were allowed to rent out their property for as long as they wanted. No specific rules or restrictions were put in place, making it literally possible for anyone to become an Airbnb host in Jamaica. Is it a good thing? Um, 
on the one hand is really good for the locals and economy because there is a chance to make extra income and money that would stay with smaller communities rather than with big corporations. In fact, Jamaica before COVID was one of the fastest growing Airbnb markets in the world. And remember, in most cases, this basically means a lot of money from other countries come to Jamaica and stay with the locals. What is more, guests who stay in resorts tend to get everything in one place. The resort, food, entertainment, souvenirs, and so on. Well, maybe they will visit a couple of famous attractions and that's it. While guests who stay in Airbnb mostly spend money on food in smaller communities or they go to a market to buy food to cook at Airbnb, they are more likely to travel off the beaten path and hence bring money to people who were not benefiting from tourism before. The thing is, this huge positive impact that Airbnb has on Jamaica is not only to do with properties, but with many other businesses. So does it mean that Airbnb only has this positive effect in Jamaica? No. Airbnb is also very bad for locals and the economy because short-term rentals drive property prices up like crazy. Especially you can see this in big cities like in Kingston or Montego Bay. The key is the balance. At the moment of publishing this video, you do not need any business registration to start an Airbnb in Jamaica. You can just take photos, write a description, place everything on Airbnb and that's it. And I will make a separate video showing how to do this process to cover all the points because I'm launching a new unit on Airbnb very soon and I will just film the process for you and add a, the video in the description when it's ready. But for now, Airbnb is not going to ask for any additional documents except for your identification. Jamaican government is not going to be tracking you like, aha, you're doing Airbnb. But they are currently working on implementing different regulations so that better balance can be achieved. So tip number one, you have to stay up to date with legal requirements in your place because they can change any moment. I personally have a business registered. It's a limited company and I run my Airbnb listings through that company. I receive all the payments to my business account and pay all the taxes. So it's very transparent. And if you're really serious about Airbnb business, this is what I would recommend, especially if you're a foreigner. Now let's move on to the important point number two. Yes, it's very easy to pass the listing on Airbnb, but the chances are you're probably not gonna get many reservations, if any at all. And here is why. Unfortunately, many people keep failing to understand that running an Airbnb, it's not passive income. It's a full-time job and a full-time business. And the other thing people get wrong is they think it's property business. It's not, it's hospitality business, not property business. I mean, you don't even need a property to do an Airbnb. You can pitch a tent by the river and rent it out, or you can put a tree house. I wonder if you have to pay property taxes on a tree house. Technically, that's a house, so property. Anyway, I keep seeing these adverts, invest in Airbnb property, but of course, it's not an Airbnb property, it's just property. And if you do nothing with it, it will not be your asset, it will be your liability, because it will keep sucking money out of you for mortgage, for maintenance, property taxes, someone to look after it. It can be such a headache. Look, if you are investing money into property anywhere in the world, you should either live there or use it as a part of your business. And the options are pretty straightforward. Long-term rental or short-term rental. That's it. But of course, there are different types of long-term and short-term rentals. You can rent out your property for a family, for commercial use, to run events, to start a farm, all sorts of things and Airbnb hospitality business is just one of them. To understand why some people become successful with it and others not, let's look at what goes into Airbnb business. Guest management online, you have to reply to reservations right away and sometimes it's a conversation that can take a few hours only to see that the guest might not even be booking with you. Guest management offline, when they arrive you have to answer the questions, solve their problems and organize their 
experience. Housekeeping. This means cleaning and laundry. Someone has to do it. Materials and supplies. You need somebody who's restocking items, toilet paper, soap, things for housekeeping like sponges, washing powder and so on. Property maintenance. There are three types. Major maintenance when you cannot accept guests like a roof is leaking, changing kitchen counter, this kind of stuff. Medium maintenance when guests can stay, but you need to compensate the inconvenience, like if there is a pipe burst and there is no water for three hours, you have to fix it fast and provide them with barrels of water, bottle of wine, something. Small maintenance. You get a message that a kettle breaks down. You run there, replace it. Then there is, of course, the work with Airbnb platform, you need to understand how the platform works. Write the description for your listing, do photography, set house rules, cancellation policies, that kind of stuff. And if you think it's a one-time thing, no, you have to keep it up to date because things change all the time. New photos and new information is needed on a regular basis. And then there is work with Airbnb company as such. Different issues with guests and glitches with the platform, you have to call them and sort things out. Accounting and finance. If you don't make profit, your work is not going to be sustainable. This means that to run an Airbnb, we have to understand the basics of how business operation goes. It's not just like income, outcome, whatever's left is profit. We need to at least distinguish things like one-time initial investment and when you're going to get return on it, a difference between operating expenses and cost of sale. I'm sure a lot of people watching this might go like, why are you talking about these obvious things? Well, because a lot of people who start an Airbnb don't have any prior business experience. Suddenly some guests don't understand how it works. They go like, oh, your property is sitting there, do nothing anyway. Let me have it for peanuts. It's better than nothing. No, making a nothing is actually better than making a loss. <laughs> it costs more money to run property when there are guests. And the last and most important is marketing. You need to stay up to date with what's going on with competition, come up with promotion ideas, do advertisement, adjust price and depending on season and global issues, keep special offers, study other hosts in other countries and see what ideas work for them and why and see if you can apply these ideas in your place and adopt them and come up with new ones. Study reviews um, that guests leave to other hosts or on such platforms as TripAdvisor, search for problems guests have and see if you can solve these problems. So tip number two, if you want to be successful with an Airbnb business, you have to treat it as a business. Sure, you can list your property on Airbnb and get one booking every three months. Why? Extra income? Well, if you calculate how much money and time you're gonna spend on it, you will not get that extra income. You will actually make a loss. When people get an idea to use their property on Airbnb, their first focus is on the property itself. They start renovating, thinking what decoration would look nice and sharing the pictures of their inside. Like, look, this is our bedroom and we have a bed. Ooh, unexpected. Of course there is a bed. What else there should be? A duppy? Come on, it's not about your property. It's about your guest. And not just any guest, but the one that exists on Airbnb platform and wants to come to Jamaica or wherever your place is located. That is why what you have to start with, like in any business, is market research. You need to learn who your target audience is and what they want. And of course, they all want different things and often the opposite things. That's why there is no way you can satisfy all of them. However, there is one thing in common. Most guests who come to Jamaica and book through Airbnb do not have a goal to stay in a room. They come for the whole experience where their room and bed is just a tiny part of it. So tip number three, do not start with your property. Start with your target audience. Guests want to have a good experience. 
or even better, the kind of experience that exceeds their expectations. To understand whether a certain property is going to work on Airbnb or not, you need to answer only two questions. Does your property offer some kind of experience that your guest is looking for? And if yes, are there enough guests on Airbnb platform who are looking for that experience and can afford it? For example, there are young people who come to Jamaica because they want to go out, have fun, you know, partying, that kind of stuff. So these guests want cheap accommodation within a short walking distance from downtown busy area so they can enjoy nightlife. And usually a studio can be a good fit for them. They don't need a kitchen, they're not going to cook, um, they don't need any extras, but for them, central location is the key. If you have a studio in downtown, these are the kind of guests you can aim for. There are people who come for the experience of family reunion. They might need a bigger place, like a two-bedroom apartment with nicely equipped kitchen. They would also want you to allow unregistered guests on property, and they need good parking, maybe a garden, you know, that kind of stuff. A property somewhere away from downtown would be a much better fit for that. Once you figure out the target audience and understand what they need, your property should then be adjusted to meet these needs. Now, what happens if somebody books you who is not your target audience? Bad review happens. That's what happens. Guests want to be close to downtown and they book your place that is secluded they're not going to enjoy their stay. While they're going to occupy the dates that could have been booked by somebody who would have enjoyed their stay. So tip number four, you need to provide the experience that your target audience wants and match it with the property you have. If you cannot match these, your property is not going to work. The secret of a successful Airbnb listing that, that super host status, whatever. It's to promote your place in such a way that it would attract the right people, the ones who would really enjoy your place. And at the same time, your listing should not even pop up in the search for the people who are not going to enjoy your place. Not because there is something wrong with them. They're just looking for a different experience that you cannot provide. The goal of Airbnb business is not like get as many bookings as possible. It's actually better not to have any bookings at some point than to have unhappy guests. I mean, why would you want to have unhappy people? And this can also mess up your reputation. With Airbnb platform, your reputation is everything. It's very difficult to earn and very easy to lose. Is your property suitable for Airbnb? After publishing my first video where I share my story of how I started Airbnb business in Jamaica, I received quite a lot of emails and messages from people asking if I can manage their property or if I can advise something on putting their property on Airbnb. And one of the reasons I'm making this video now is to address all of these questions. Question number one, at the moment I cannot manage anyone else's property. I already have the ones I do and I cannot focus on any others. I'm sorry about that. Question number two, what is the best property management company in Jamaica? I don't know. And to be honest, I don't think it can work at all in, you know, for Airbnb in Jamaica. Otherwise, I would have launched it myself, but I did the calculations. What I mean is, like, in certain countries, you can have one host who manages 200 properties in different places around the city. And I've seen hosts in Jamaica who are trying to do the same. The reason this concept works in some countries is because guests there, they do self-check-in, they never see a host, they do self-check-out, that's it. They don't need instructions on how to use a route taxi or where to find food. They can just Google things in Jamaica it's not exactly the same thing. In Jamaica, properties are also spread out all over the place. It's just physically impossible to go everywhere to monitor housekeeping and meeting guests. So unless all properties are clustered in one place, you cannot do hosting 
properly. I mean, you can, but it's not quality work. Maybe one day somebody going to come up with a magic way of being in several places at the same time or hire a team of good professional hosts who will work for free. But until then, if you want to do Airbnb business in Jamaica, do it yourself or hire a host who is going to focus on your property only or properties within like one small area. And the last question was, can my property be used for Airbnb? Basically, how to know if your property is going to match the experience people are looking for on Airbnb platform. This is what we shall focus as the last most important point of this video. The place to start is outside of your property. Where is it located? Almost any location can work in Jamaica, but it would work for different reasons. Think who are the people who would want to come to your location and why? Is there something specific to your area, like a unique area place, maybe a waterfall, sea, cave, any natural feature? What about other attractions? Maybe a historical place, a museum, maybe there is a shipwreck um, underwater, 10 minutes drive from you. What is it? What are the things to do? Is it a best place for relaxing, spending time with the family, partying, maybe meditation or romantic getaway? What is it that people are going to experience while staying at your place? The other thing, never underestimate the view. If you're hosting in the Caribbean, it's the best place in the world to spend time outside enjoying a great view. No sea view? Fine. What about the mountains, the river? A garden? If your place doesn't have a good view, you need to create one. Maybe a balcony or veranda facing sunsets. Then the things to consider is the convenience. Shops, food and transport. Most properties in Jamaica are located in the hills, quite far from supermarkets and restaurants. If your guests want to go out, how are they going to do it? You need to work it out and see it from the perspective of your guests. Then look at the factors that can be viewed as negative. Is there noise from the highway, from airplanes, or maybe a restaurant next door playing music, maybe dogs barking? Imagine if you advertise your place as a quiet, relaxing getaway, and then at 4 a.m. there is a rooster. <laughs> Once all of these things are taken into account and you understand the experience people can get within the area where you are located, only then you need to look at the property itself and what you can do with it. You see, it's very common in Jamaica for people to have these big houses, like a family home, four bedrooms, eight bedrooms. And what happens? People just put them on Airbnb like that. However, the majority of people who book through Airbnb don't need a big house like that. So it's just going to sit there doing nothing. I can use it for weddings, maybe. But what does it have to do with Airbnb. The number of people who use Airbnb to search for a place for weddings in Jamaica, not very high. And the other thing, using a property to run weddings is a completely different story. It's not about short-term rentals anymore. It's a different business. It's called event and banqueting service management, whatever. If you want to specialize in weddings, you can also do other events, birthdays, family reunions, funerals business settings, trainings, whatever, fine. But Airbnb platform is not for that. And I honestly don't know which one is because I'm in a different type of business. So you have to find out for yourself. Look, there are also some places that will not work with Airbnb. They don't fit the format simply because you will not be able to match the proposition you offer, like the value of the experience to the price you have to charge for this. Yes, there are listings on Airbnb that get fully booked because there is something unique and special about them. Here are a few examples to show you what I mean. There is also a separate part of Airbnb platform for luxury accommodation called Airbnb Lux. This is where you can get properties in Jamaica that are like 2000 US dollars a night. However, the truth is, 
Airbnb is mostly associated with budget accommodation. It's true for all countries in the world, but it is especially true for Jamaica. People don't want to overpay for all-inclusive resorts. That's certainly one of the reasons why they go for Airbnb. Imagine if there is a really nice villa close to Montego Bay. Each unit is nicely designed and it costs a lot of money to run this property, so you cannot really charge less than 300 US dollars a night for a room like that. But nobody is going to book it on Airbnb for 300 bucks. Why? Because for that amount, they can get a room in an all-inclusive hotel with an access to a beach and food and everything. For example, Holiday Inn in Montego Bay. Why would they bother getting a room for the same amount in, in the villa in the middle of whatever? And no, you cannot provide luxury service at that price either. In this case, you will have to charge even more then. This property simply doesn't fit. It's too good for budget accommodation, but not good enough for luxury. You can still work with it. Turn it into a boutique hotel, yoga center, whatever, but not Airbnb. So a property that you might think should definitely work, look how nice it is, is not gonna work because the value proposition is not what people are looking for and ready to pay for on Airbnb platform specifically. Here's another example. You have an apartment site close to Manchester in Jamaica. What kind of experience can people get there? There is actually quite a lot to do there, but tourists don't know about any of it. Like, there is Milk River. Huh? What is it? Uh, there is an alligator pond. Sounds scary. Tourists don't know about these names and that's why you cannot use them to promote that location. So your target audience would most likely be people from Jamaican diaspora who come to see their family or a foreigner who has a Jamaican partner. This property can work. If you price it right, it can be more suitable for Airbnb than a fancy villa close to Montego Bay. But of course, your target audience would be really different from the one I mostly get, for instance, right? And then the question is, how many of these people are on Airbnb? And how many other hosts offer their accommodation in Manchester? So. Tip number five, do your research. Study all the listings that exist on Airbnb already for your area. Do they get bookings, how much they charge? Pay attention to properties that have a lot of reviews. Check out if there are any hotels or guest houses in that area, what they offer, how much they charge. And this of course will help you to understand what kind of experience guests are looking for in your area and if you can match your property with what they want. And then don't forget to subscribe to this channel not to miss the next step on how to create a listing on Airbnb, do photos properly, set pricing right, get good description, how to minimize your expenses but maximize the experience for the guests. Please don't forget to check my other videos about Jamaica. I have over 20,000 subscribers but some videos have under 10,000 views. Check them out and I hope you're gonna like them, like my recent videos about camping, birds, Frenchman's Cove, and so on. And if you enjoyed this talking head episode, don't forget to give it a like and let me know in the comment section below if you want to learn more about working with Airbnb and what exactly you would like to know. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Irina and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.